Hi guys, it's Uncle here. Hope you're doing well. Today, I'm checking out the Wampler Terraform. Yes, it is here. It's finally here. It's real. I've got one. This is, a lot of people have been waiting a very long time for this pedal, and it really is a bit of a different direction for Wampler, and a fantastic direction as well. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to check it out. You've heard it in the intro track. I think it sounds fantastic. We're going to check out all the features. We fairly extensive demo this, uh, run through everything that this pedal does. And I said to you that this is a bit of a departure or different uh, direction for Wampler. This is really their first foray into um, the everything but the kitchen sink kind of style of pedal, where you've got a modulation delay reverb style pedal that does every type or the most the most kind of um, useful types of modulation stroke delay stroke reverb and in this case the terraform is a modulation pedal it's a digital pedal the guys have spent so long working and tweaking these algorithms to make them the best they can possibly be and it really does sound fantastic I know you guys will think I'm completely biased and I guess I am a little bit but it really does sound superb um, so what you've got here is a very small form factor pedal that's doing all of those different modulations. And if you think about some of the other pedals on the market here, I'm not trying to compare and contrast too much, but obviously that's important. Um, if you think about the MD500 from Boss, if you think about the Mobius from Strymon, those are the other two big, big competitors to this pedal. The first thing that struck me when this arrived, and I did actually, I was lucky enough to play through it last year at NAMM as well. So I have seen this before. Um, the first thing that struck me is how small it is. For, I mean, when I think of these kind of everything but the kitchen sink pedals, I think of quite large format pedals. Um, this is about half the size of the Mobius and about uh, two thirds the size of the MD500. So it really is quite small. I have a Strum and Big Sky and a Timeline down here, and it would literally fit on half of one of those pedals, which is really, really impressive and very cool indeed. Very high powered DSP in here, fantastic quality sound. You know you're getting great quality converters. Um, and all the best components here because it's Wampler, obviously. So that's really, really nice. So if we look at the actual pedal itself, what we've got is a very simple layout. Now, if you're somebody who's menu phobic, you don't want to go through pages and pages of menus, you know, you don't want to be dealing with tons and tons of parameters, this is a great choice for you because, um, as you can see, it's all tactile. There's no menus here at all. There's actually no hidden functions. You don't have to press two things down and tweak something else to get a certain sound. It's all what you see is what you get. Very, very easy to use. And I think that's one of the things that they were really going for with this, is to make it the Wampler experience of being able to kind of dial things in, but not you know have all that digital functionality and the quality of the algorithms, but not have to go deep into the editing process. So we've got, very simple layout, we've got our standard mode dial on here, and this is gonna select between our different um, modulations. Now, I'm gonna read the cheat sheet here because I can't quite see this pedal the way it's set up here, and I also need an eye test to see this. Um, so we've got dimension, chorus, harmonic tremolo, tremolo, Auto Swell, uh, Rotary, Univibe, Phaser, Flanger, Envelope Filter, and Auto Wah. Okay, so those are all the effects on there. This sheet also, which comes with the Terraform, tells you what all the controls do because they vary depending on which algorithm we're utilizing at any given time. So we then have all your standard modulation controls. So we've got rate, depth, we've got a blend control, variable. Now that is gonna do different functions depending on which modulation we're on. So we'll check that out individually for each algorithm. And then we have our volume control, okay, which is just gonna boost or cut. It's not gonna go down to uh, zero. What I really like is that volume control is notched in the center as well for unity gain, which is really, really nice. But things like tremolos um, and some of the other effects, some of the effects that pulse the volume can drop your general volume level down. So you, sometimes it's useful to be able to boost that as well. Um, we've got true bypass switching on here, really good quality. Foot switches, they're non-latching. So no issues with latching foot switches. We've got tap tempo on here, which also has a different function when we're in the rotary. That's gonna switch between ramping up and ramping down. And you can see lovely pulse on there, very smooth. And then we've got presets. Now, because this is a digital pedal, of course, you can store presets. And you need that when you've got this much functionality and this many algorithms going. So you can store eight presets. You can see we've got four LEDs on here. Basically, in the first four banks, we get a single light on that shows us we're in preset three at the moment. As we switch through, then basically we get the, the unlit LED is the preset that we're on. So we get eight presets. Now, if we look at the ins and outs of the pedal, that's going to make the presets thing a little bit more, uh, make a little bit more sense because you might be thinking, well, how am I going to switch presets using this tiny button here, you know, when it's on the floor? 
Well, if we look at the top of the pedal here, I don't know if you can see these labels that well, we've got our standard 9 volt center negative DC input, and this will accept up to 18 volts. Yesterday, just as an experiment, I plugged a 12 volt center negative DC input uh, power supply in there. It worked fine. So you can go all the way up to 18 volts if you want. I don't know what that does in terms of headroom for this kind of a pedal, but still, it's nice to know that you can do that. We have an expression pedal input, okay, and there's a few different parameters that you can control with the expression pedal. Um, and then we've got a little switch here that switches between pre and post and normal, which I will get to shortly, so don't worry about that for now. But here is the piece de resistance. We have MIDI, in, and through, which are small 3.5mm TRS jack sockets. Now, this is super cool because with the presets, it means that I've got like a gig rig G2 down here. If you've got a Boss ES8, I've also got a small one control gecko MIDI switcher. Any MIDI switcher, you can switch between your eight presets, which is really useful. Now, with it being TRS, one of the really nice things that Wampler do, and I think this is a really nice touch that I've never seen before. So apologies to any manufacturers out there if I'm slighting you at this point, I've never seen it. It actually comes with a TRS to MIDI converter. That's really cool, so you don't have to worry about that. And it means that you can integrate very easily this into your MIDI setup, which is fantastic. Okay, so that's great. So you've got your in and your through, so if you want to send the MIDI signal over across to some other pedals, like a Strymon Timeline or whatever, or you know, when Wampler come out with some other MIDI pedals in the future, I think they've got a couple that have MIDI on now as well. Um, that's gonna be a really nice feature. Then in terms of the ins and the outs, the last thing to tell you about, uh, really, really fully featured. So the first thing to say is you can run this in mono or what I'm going to call true stereo operation. So mono or stereo or true stereo, which is like studio stereo. So we've got standard mono in and standard mono out or left in and left out as they're calling it. That's how I'm running it. I'm just running into this Laney Lionheart. I'm actually running through my pedal board as well because you can probably hear here if I bypass this, we've got some... A little bit of delay and reverb. I say a little bit, quite a lot of delay and reverb, or reverb anyway. Um, so we've got a standard in and out, but we also have true stereo operation. So we've got left and right in, not just left in and stereo out, but left and right in. Now that means you could utilize this as outboard gear in the studio. You could utilize it with keyboards. You could utilize it with anything that's a stereo signal coming in and stereo going out. If you need to maintain that signal integrity all the way through your signal chain. However, you can also run mono to stereo for guitar, which we will do. I'll show you that. I'm going to mic up two amps as well so you can hear it in stereo and pan those hard left and right because modulations sound fantastic in stereo. Or, fantastic feature that Wampler have included, which I'm really, really glad they did, is this pre and post feature. Now, this little switch on the top, I'm in normal mode at the moment. If I switch it over to the left, on my left, it goes into pre and post mode. Now, look at the LED. See the way it changes color? So we uh, sort of a light blue for a normal and a purple for pink for pre and post. What pre and post allows you to do is effectively in the first mode, if you just run pre and post without using the effects loop on your amplifier, you can run your guitar into the input here, come out of the pre out, and then go into your drive pedals, okay? Then you can run your drive pedals into the post in and then run the post out to your amplifier. Now what that means is that you can run the drives before some of the effects, or you can run the, some of the effects before the drives. Because what you can do is you can, there's a mode that when, when you switch the pedal on, you can assign each of the effects globally to be either before or after. So they can be in the pre section or the post section. So you could run your, uh, let's say your flanger, your phaser, your univive before your drive pedals, and then have everything else. So your auto waves, your choruses, whatever, after your drive pedals. So that's mode one. Okay, the other way you could run it is you could run your guitar into the pre, and you could run the pre out into all of your drive pedals, and then go into the front of the amp, and then the post section you could run into your effects loop, which could contain your delays and reverbs or whatever else you're using as well. And again, you can assign certain effects to be in the post or your effects loop, and certain effects to be in the pre or going into the front of the amplifier. Very easy to cable, very easy to understand, very, very cool indeed. Okay, so we're just running normal mode. So enough waffle. Let's have a listen to how it sounds. It really does sound fantastic, guys. What they've they've really kind of nailed the kind of uh, I hate to use the term, but kind of analog vibe of this. So it's really cool. So my bypass tone. Again, running a Laney Lionheart, Ibanez TQM1, my signature guitar. I'm running through my pedal board, which is basically running um, a Strymon timeline in a big sky, just for a little bit of delay and reverb. 
Brian will kill me for using those. I should have been using Wampler ones, but they're not on my board, unfortunately. So this is my uh, clean tone. <laughs> So let's start in the dimension mode. Okay, now I'm gonna get my cheat sheet ready just to tell you what all of the controls do. Let's turn it on. Okay, and this is actually notched so that you can't go any further than this. So if you can't see the pedal like this, it's very easy to tell you're on the, 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 the last setting or the dimension mode. Okay, let's check this out. <laughs> sounds lush, super, super epic. So obviously the dimension is based on the um, the kind of Roland dimension rack mount unit. I can't remember what it's exactly called, dimension D or something I think it's called. Um, so the controls are really, really straightforward. So we've got rate, we've got depth, blend. Okay, so that blend is going to bring in our clean sound. Obviously the rate and depth are self-explanatory. The variable is going to change our low end and then the volume just changes the output volume overall. So it's not a mix control, that's the blend control. So let's play with the controls a little bit. <laughs> So let's bring the rate up and the depth down. And then playing with the blend control is really going to drastically change the way that the modulation sits with your clean signal. Very kind of Sco-like sound, John Schofield kind of sound, very, very cool. Now the variable here, as I say, is going to change the amount of low end in the signal. So when it's backed off, and then if we dial that all the way up, pull that back out again. So kind of subtle, but a beautiful sounding dimension chorus. If we just do the opposite now, bring the rate down and the depth up. I absolutely love this. Switch to the position four. Beautiful. Now, if we switch over one algorithm, just make sure I'm on the right algorithm, I can't see the chorus, there we go. Uh, again, this is, unlike the dimension, which is a bit thicker with a certain number of voices, this is, um, I don't know if it's more subtle, but it's a different sound, basically. Hear how it's kind of smoother, it's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Beautiful. And again, we can play with the depth. When you, because it's a digital pedal, when you move to the next algorithm, it's actually going to reset the parameters. So it's worth being aware of the fact that the dials don't always represent what you've got when you switch immediately. Now, when you bypass the pedal, the red LED will tell you that you've changed the preset that you're on. That's worth knowing as well. It's so lush. Now here again, I believe the variable will change, yes, the amount of bass. There you go, so that's brought out some of the bass now. Really beautiful.
beautiful. Let's increase the rate. Again, bring the actual depth down. Really beautiful. Now if we switch across, now we're into a harmonic tremolo side of things. Now the variable in this um, setting is going to change the width and the rate um, and speed controls are going to obviously affect the, or the rate control is going to affect the speed and the effect level is controlled by the depth here. So super cool. So you can hear when we get into the highest elements of the depth, it gets much more intense. Very, very nice indeed. Now what I haven't shown you at this point is the tap tempo. So obviously... Very cool indeed. And that tap tempo can be MIDI mapped as well to a CC controller, so if you... Um, a continuous controller. So if you wanted to do that, you could tap tempo from somewhere else on your board. Now in this instance, the width is not going to do too much. We're more talking about stereo in that case. Truly, truly stunning. Okay, then we move on to our tremolo. So there's a non-harmonic tremolo that's not going to actually affect, it's not going to warble in the same way as harmonic tremolo. So again here, the depth is going to affect how much it pulses, the, the actual strength of the pulse. So more like a sine wave or more like a square wave. So when we go all the way up, we get a full square wave. As we back off. And the variable in this case is going to affect the waveform width, so. Here, there, the pulses get shorter. Sounds absolutely amazing. So if we now go up to our auto swell. Now what I've got here, the auto swell is going to swell in the sound from zero. It's going to ramp the volume up basically. And you can change things like um, the rate here. Now the other controls for this, in terms of the auto swell, the depth is going to control, um, again, the amount of um, swelling that we get. Um, we've got the output volume, um, the blend is the amount of clean signal that we've got. So we don't have to have complete... If we bring the rate back, 
and then bring the blend back. You can hear now we've got dry signal coming through. So, so you can actually combine the swell. There's some very interesting kind of rhythmic um, effects where the clean signal interacts with the, um, the wet signal. And then the variable on this one is going to control the pick attack speed. So there the swell is actually slower. So Now this is particularly effective if you grab um, kind of like a long delay or reverb like that. Beautiful, beautiful sound. Very cool. So I'm going to switch back to my original sound. Okay, let's go to the Univibe, uh, sorry, the rotary speaker, my favorite effects that I use loads on the intro video. Killer. It's one of the best I've heard in a very long time, actually. Um, and again, the controls here are pretty straightforward. So our rate here is controlling the uh, higher speed horn setting. I'll just make sure I get this right because, again, there's so much to remember. So the max horn speed is controlled by the rate. The max woofer speed is controlled by the depth. Okay, and then the output volume is our output volume. The blend is the blend between the horn and the woofer, and the, the variable controls the ramping speed. So one of the cool things about the way this is set up is if we hit the tap tempo here, we're going to move down to the slower speaker speed. If we hit it again, Really, really beautiful. Something a little bit more subtle. Okay, moving on to the Univibe. Sounds so, so good. Now here are the controls, basically this is gonna, um, the depth control is gonna change our um, filter setting. Here there it makes it darker. The rate is obviously the rate. We've got our blend control. This is really important for Univibe. And the variable is going to control our wave shape. Okay, there we've got almost like a reverse wave. Beautiful. And then moving on to our phaser. 
Fantastic again. And now our flanger. Now this one, just to show you, I'm going to run in front of a drive pedal as well, just to show you how it sounds in that context. <laughs> So here, if we increase the feedback depth all the way, we can get into the kind of uh, self-oscillation kind of territory as well. Let's turn the drive pedal on here. And now we get. It's going to switch the bright switch off on the amp for this particular demo. <laughs> Again, sounds absolutely fantastic. Let's switch back to the original sound on my pedal board. Okay, so we're getting close. Let's do the envelope follower, envelope filter. Love this, it's absolutely awesome. And then finally, we've got our auto wire, which is going to pulse our wire setting at whatever we set our tap tempo to. And again, that's got all the lushness of an analog kind of pedal. So the last thing I want to do is just mic this up in stereo. I'm going to bring in another amp here, um, another clean amp, and we'll mic it up in stereo, and you can have a listen to a couple of the algorithms in stereo. Okay, so I'm hooked up in stereo now. Um, one of these amps is a little bit noisy, I apologize, guys, but I've got Lenny Lionheart, and then I've got a Port City Merino over there. Um, they're sort of similar in wattage terms, both set completely clean, and I've got reverb running through both of them. If I just bypass... <laughs> That's my clean tone. I'm going to turn on the chorus here, and again, we're running mono in stereo out.
So there we go guys, fantastic pedal, really, really, really superb. Hope you enjoyed the demo. Um, if you did, as usual, um, hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Um, and also if you wanna hit my bell notification icon below, uh, make sure you never miss any more of my content. I'm gonna try and upload more and more as the uh, as time goes on. So check out the link in the description below. You can click on OnePlus website and check out more details on Terraform and some other people's demos as well. My name's Tom Quayle, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all soon, bye-bye.